Hey everybody, it's Yasmin here. How are you? Just let me get rid of that. There we go. Now it looks like I'm in the sky. Have a nice. Um, so I thought I would hop on today and say hello. I've actually got some things I want to talk to talk to you about. Uh, I wrote them down, so I'd be prepared. So 2022, why should we be optimistic? And also, uh, when we manifest, who are we creating with? And, uh, and then I'm going to tell you about two workshops I'm holding, one of which is free and one of which is paid. Ah, hello, people are getting on. Hi, Valentine Inglis. Hello. How is everybody today? I almost made it for 11.11. 11. Hey, Michelle. I do try. Um, I just got out of the habit. I've had a really intense year like everybody, I think. It's all fine. No reason to complain. More, more, more worries than anything else. And worries are obviously a very, you know, negative way. It's a good way of attracting what you don't want. Teresa, how are you today, Yasmin? Hello. Um, I am pretty good. I would say pretty good. I went to a naturopath as recommended by Kyle Gray, who I'm going to do a card from his new deck today. Kyle recommended a naturopath to me after I had COVID and I think they're kicking in. All right, so let us, let us begin. So 2022, why should we be optimistic? So I think that I feel the urge to speak to you, hello, cuz, uh, about 2022, because I know that there's a lot of negativity out in the world. And um, I'm just going to say... Uh, Honestly, about a week ago or 10 days ago when I, you may have seen I wrote a post about um, Omicron and how, you know, it could be a good thing, fingers crossed, because it's less, because it's milder, um, but more infectious. So hopefully if it spreads, it can be the dominant virus and it's much milder, uh, you know, for as long as that can last. And um, I really... Like, I really felt Jonathan Kainer around me oh, when I wrote that post, when I found the urge to post it. Some of you might remember Jonathan Kainer, or I'm sure many of you did. Um, and uh, many of you do, I should say. And um, I've just seen Kyle commenting, yes, I went to see Bob. He's amazing. I've been twice. Um, look, the long and the short of what I want to talk about is this. 2022 looks much better and the astrology is really good and I felt Jonathan Kainer around me and he used to always be the person I would turn to when things like this were going on and he would always make his predictions and they I would say had a pretty high accuracy rate because astrology is pretty accurate um the astrology for 2022 is positive that's what I really the message I really want to get across a bit like uh in the uh, post I wrote about COVID, I quoted a doctor in South Africa who said, you know, the message I want to get across is that um, this is milder, the symptoms are milder. Well, the message I want to get across is 2022 is looking way more positive. And uh, we just have to stay positive. And, you know, at the end of the day, if, um, if this virus, I think it's going to be fine. It makes sense. The astrology is positive, the symptoms are mild, and it's very infectious. So fingers crossed. But, you know, just to hedge my bets, even if the virus comes back, you know, we are, the astrology for next year is much better. So even if we're in lockdown, we're probably going to be happier. Maybe some of us have realized that we actually quite like lockdown <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. But next year is better. And that's the message I want to get across. But I did feel Jonathan around me very strongly. And I realized that normally I would have gone to him to see what he was going to say about Omicron. And I think he whispered in my ear. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, and I did that post and I hope it's true. And I do believe that if we all hold a vision of a better 2022, we've got a much better chance of, of getting it because the astrology is honestly amazing. And the other thing I wanted to talk about today, which is kind of along the same lines, um, is, uh, you know, like I'm going to be encouraging you to be manifesting in um, 2022. I'm going to be encouraging you to think about what you want in your life and to aim to create it. 
And, you know, I'm aware this is quite a big thing, you know, encouraging people to do things like this is a big thing. And so I was thinking, I should address this question. When we manifest, how are we creating? Are we co-creating with the divine? Are we divine? Are we praying to God and God is giving us what we want? You know, are we just doing it from our own power? And I thought, you know, given that the astrology for 2022 is much better this year in the coming year, I feel like uh, it's going to be a really much better time for people to manifest because the better we feel, the better manifestors we are. And this last year and this year, the astrology was really effing difficult, right? And, um, you know, next year it's much, much better. It's not perfect, but it never is, but it's much, much better. So who, if I'm encouraging you to use the positive vibes next year to manifest, how are you manifesting? Tell me in the comments, actually. I should have said that 10 minutes ago because you would have had a chance uh, to put your comments in there. But when you manifest, who do you think you're manifesting with? Who do you think you're man? Is it from you? Is it with God? Was it a goddess? Is it through your crown chakra? Through your own power? I'm not getting any answers, actually. Maybe you're writing and there's a delay. I've got, I'm getting offers to put people on camera. Carol, okay. Carol says we, we manifest from Source, Nessie from the universe. Megan from the universe. Gaynor from Goddesses. Amazing. Woo. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is what I think. Karen says with God. Gretchen says the universe. All right, so this is what I think. I think that we don't realize that we are divine. That's what I think. I think that we don't realize it and that part of the reason why we do manifesting here on earth, which as Sonia Choquette taught me when I spent time with her in Paris, the, the, school, the, the earth is a school of manifestation. We're here to learn how to manifest. I do believe that. And I think that's really, really, really likely, put it like that, because you think about, you know, creation, what, how much we value creation, creating anything, humans, art, you know, amazing, whatever. Um, so I think we don't realise we are divine. That's what I think. And that we learn that we are divine when we start to manifest because we start to see our powers, which is why I always say go in baby steps. So there we go. So... It reminds me of my lovely friend, Laura Day, who I've been doing lots of um, chats on her Instagram lately. And she always says, you know, you don't have to um, look out for the divine. You are the divine, Yasmin. I won't, Im I won't mimic her accent for once. <laughs> I don't think she likes it when I do it. I thought it was funny, but I don't think she finds it funny. She's a really beautiful New Yorker. So there we go. Um, I think we're all divine. That's my opinion, and I was reminded of that when I went to India, uh, I think in about 2004, and I'd been very much on the spiritual path, probably for a good five or ten years by that stage. And, um, and I remember I went to India for five days, and to this ashram for five days. That was my intention. Uh, I had five weeks in India. I got to the ashram, and I was like, I'm not going anywhere else. This place is off the scale amazing and um and once I got back I was living in Paris at the time once I got back to Paris I was there with a girlfriend of mine Jane Perchel who's always been a huge influence for me on my journey my spiritual journey we've more or less done it together and I hope I've helped her a bit she's definitely helped me and she said so what did you learn in India and just bear in mind I'd had five weeks there I I had come and and there you know it's not cultural appropriation you are asked, you are requested, you are pretty much required to, uh, if you do the right thing and dress in Indian dress. Because otherwise, for one thing, you stand out too much. For another, you may be revealing parts of your body which in India should not be revealed. Um, and three, you know, you are actually encouraged to work with Lakshmi. Uh, there and by making yourself beautiful in the Indian way with flowers in your hair and kumkum and all that. So I'd done that for five weeks, 
wearing a scarf, covering yourself, keeping yourself modest. And I was back in Paris and I remember I still had Indian clothes on because I just didn't feel ready to take them off, <laughs> especially the shawl because the shawl's lovely. I might even have put something on my, on my head, I don't remember, but I'm sure Jane thought it was very funny that he was Yasmin back in Paris from India, from five weeks in India. But she said, so what was the main thing you learned? And that's what I want to share with you right now. I think the main thing that I learned was to bring the divine back into the picture and to realize that I am divine and I'm a multi-dimensional human being, which I know sounds really far out. And But, you know, there's me here and there's my higher self and there's the part of me that's all connect, connected to all life everywhere and we all have that. And so that's why when we're creating, we sort of, it's reminding ourselves that we are divine. So there we go. So they were the two things I felt inspired to talk to you about today. Uh, not much astrology in there, but there's always astrology in everything. So, for example, right now, uh, the Neptune, the planet of the divine and the planet of the numinous is doing a very long visit to the sign of Pisces and uh, that has its own influence. That has its own influence and you know Neptune's the planet of the divine, Pisces is the planet of the divine, you put them together and what do you get? <laughs> a lot of numinousness, a lot of divine stuff. That's why people are you know doing all this stuff while we're all opening up and learning you know to the mystical and the magic. Um, magic being more kind of Pluto but there you are which is currently at the end end of a long, long stay in Capricorn. So on the subject of where the planets are and what they're doing and what they mean, I also wanted to tell you today about two workshops that I'm having in the new year. One is free, more or less, and uh, one's being organised with um, Hay House, and it's not free. <coughs> um, because it will cost a lot to produce apart from anything else. Okay, so basically um, the free one you get when you buy the diary. So if you've already bought the diary, thank you very much. Make sure you go to, I think it's moonmessages.com. I'm 99%, it's, uh, it's either diary 2021 or moonology diary 2021. Sorry, I didn't put the link up, I should have. And you can register and you'll get a free workshop, which will probably last about 45 minutes, half an hour. And it's gonna be amazing, hopefully. And I wanna give you really, really broad brush strokes about the year ahead so so one thing we do i've done it every year since the diary came out it was actually kyle gray's idea believe it or not he's he said do that i'm like what a great idea kyle <laughs> he's, he's amazing anyway um that's what i'll be doing be like looking at what does it mean that you know jupiter's moving changing in and out of signs pisces and aquarius what's happening with saturn what does it all mean how do you work it out and also because i'm you know number one moonology is my thing um i'll also be looking at the eclipses okay so it's going to be it basically the idea of the if, of the workshop is to help you understand the overall lay of the land um in 2022 and someone just said is there a 2022 diary yes there is you can get it on amazon or barnes and noble or dimmix or booktopia you know all those places all those places so that's the free one and the the paid one is that so that one's january the second so put it in your diary register you have to register um on the on the page for the diary and then the paid one is being held by hay house um i don't mind admitting i'm a little bit nervous it's four hours online and we're going to take a really deep dive so basically all the headlines that i will cover in the free event we will drill down on them. So the new moons and the full moons and the eclipses and then also the planetary activity. And also with a big, big, big focus on manifesting. So there you go. And that one, if you would like to sign up for that, uh, you will get an early bird bonus if you do it now and the link is in the description. All right. Love to see you there. Get the early bird bonus. All right. And tell me in the comments what you'd like to have in the workshop as well. I'd love to know if there's anything you'd like to have in the workshop because I'm still writing them. I don't have to have the final, um, I don't have to have the final, final drafts in for about another five days. So I still can, you know, shape both workshops to whatever you want. So put it in the comments if you like something. I have drawn a card. Woo. 
Someone saying, are the new Moonology cards of 2022? No, these just, uh, mine just came out, my uh, Moonology manifestation cards. They came out quite recently. And my, I do actually have another deck, but it's nowhere near even written yet. But I've got an idea for something I really want to write. I've actually got a few ideas. Then they're all very different. All right, so I have a card here from the wonderful Kyle Gray, who actually has been watching this. I don't know if he's still watching. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. I know because he made a few comments. Just so happened I was going to do his cards. It wasn't arranged, I promise you. Is Okay, Tina Lambert says, this card is for me. Amy, claim the card. Alexandra, claim the card. So if this card is for you, just put in the comments, this card is for me. This card is for me. What does it say? Oh, it's a beautiful card. Let me just... All right. Okay, it's a really beautiful card, actually. These cards are really beautiful. I'm not sure if you can see it quite clearly. It's a beautiful picture of a, of a crystal. Um, but what's really special is it's got this sort of, like, almost like television interference on it. Um, like it's a transmission or something coming through. A bit like in Star Wars when uh, Princess Leia is being glitching help you we can't one Kenobi it's a bit like that it's really cool really cool okay beautiful picture so Lemurian sea codes um, embracing sensitivity uniqueness and living with grace so first of all there's a little bit of a teaching Lemuria was a civilization that was in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in ancient times the inhabitants of this sacred land lived in complete harmony with nature and had a connection with every living being. Amazing. Well, I was just saying, I think we all are connected to all life everywhere. So I, I agree with that. Um, okay, similar to the movie Avatar. Their inner vision was fully activated ugh, to the point where it is thought that their pineal gland, which I think is about there, where we call the third eye, you know, uh, their pineal gland was fully developed and they could see for hundreds of miles in every direction in a similar way to the sonar of dolphins and whales. Amazing. The majority operated from their heart space, honouring one another and nature. Amazing. So that when their civilization came, so much so that when their civilization came to an end through a cataclysmic event, most likely the plates of the earth shifting and causing volcanic eruptions and a tsunami, most of them ascended. There you go. All right, let me just see, what were they called again? Did they have a name? No, maybe the Lemurians. Um, okay, they ascended. It is said that these highly attuned beings knew that their civilization would end and decided to send healing waves, oh my God, isn't this cool, into another part of the world for future civilizations to benefit from. Wow. They telepathically channeled their frequencies into a thought form that would become crystals. Ah, that would later be found thousands, possibly millions of years later. We all have to get ourselves a Lemurian crystal now, don't we? I've seen them, I've never bought one. These Lemurian seeds are a type of quartz crystal, mostly found in Brazil and Colombia. They are powerful crystals with striations, which are the little lines, similar to barcodes engraved on their faces. So cool, Kyle. They have a feminine receptive energy that is said to help us step into a more feminine way of being in order to help the evolution of the species. There you go. Well, now I really want some Lemurian crystals. I, I, I've hesitated to buy them because I'm worried that I might not buy the real thing uh, online because they're so specialized. And yet Venus Rocks, one of the best shops just near me is great, but it, it costs like 20 times more 
there than anywhere else, but it is a beautiful shop. I'm not criticizing them. I've bought things from there. They're amazing. Maybe you just need to pay for really, really top quality crystals. Probably, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you're a crystal expert. All right, so connect, visualize. Oh, here we go. Visualize yourself on an island surrounded by pale blue waters living in harmony with all living beings wow so you know it's really interesting kyle and i have both put sort of little rituals in our cards this time around i think it's because we're realizing we want to take the cards to the next level it's not just about here you know connect to your divine self use the cards and you can tell where you are at with something what's coming up what you're creating um but you can actually you know participate in the experience and um that's interesting i didn't know that carl i didn't know we'd both done that we've done both done something very similar if you own a lemurian seed crystal hold it in your left hand call out to the ancient ones of lemuria and invite them to share their wisdom oh my god sounds so good doesn't it i'm feeling like we, i might i would really like to do this but i might just do it by myself or i don't know maybe i, I don't know your message so this is the message for all of us people are getting excited about the cards kyle so they should gateway of light activation oracle guidebook that they're the cards i should be advertising my cards <laughs> okie dokie so are you ready for your message all right so here we go this is a message for you if you're listening you are a highly sensitive being. You might feel that this is a curse at times, but this card is here to let you know this is a gift. It indicates that you have spent lifetimes upon lifetimes living with a giant shield up to stop the world seeing the real you. Oh but you are a highly unique soul with incredible gifts that are worth sharing. This is for you if you're listening. Through embracing your uniqueness, you can help many others embrace their own. This lifetime is a more graceful existence, that's nice, with less defense and more trust. It's not about protecting yourself, but stepping into the space of surrender and revealing your true self. So there you go, Kyle's card of the day. Woohoo! So I feel like the message with what I said before I took the card and now the, the card that I just got from Kyle's new deck, um, I feel like the message is step into your power. You know, because that's what astrology does. It helps you step in, and that, in particular, that's what moonology does. You don't need to understand all of astrology if you don't want to. It's great if you do, but if you want to pair it back, just go for the moonology. All right, so there we go. Click the link if you want to come to my workshop. It's going to be four hours online in uh, mid-January, January the 15th. And I will be talking about this kind of stuff, but in a more astrological context. Okie dokie. Lots of love, guys. Thanks.